Good morning, folks. Brains on. We've got to start today with a little sun dive and comet heading in from the south and disappearing. We've got a number of items to hit today, so let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours was a quieter one on the sun. We've had no more eruptive behavior. The filaments are staying in their places. We can see the southern corona hole incoming just below the equator, and the X-ray flux shows the solar flaring production dropping out. However, we've been awaiting CME impact. Please recall from yesterday, NOAA's Enlil spiral shows four of the eruptions. There were actually six, and while the bigger ones will hit today, one of the smaller ones integrated with slow solar wind last night. Eyes are going to the pink vertical line, which will disappear here to reveal the small but sudden jump in multiple telemetry points. It's a CME, and that includes a rise in the BZ. The other solar wind satellite caught less of the fine detail telemetry changes, but logged a major southward component a lightning-fast jab to the chin of our magnetic field. Most of the world took the impact very well, numerous magnetometers showing less than 1% deviation in their data, all except Australia, which saw a 300 to 500% increase. If you recall the solar wind data, this matches at around the noon to 2 or 3 o'clock p.m. Sydney time. And while nobody will ever be able to definitively peg that power plant explosion that just happened, at the exact same time, in this location, to the CME impacting and penetrating our weaker field, the full amount of data you would want to make the suggestion is in fact there. And of course, the slightly larger components of the CME should be arriving here later today. Quick note, folks, I am back in Facebook jail, this time for a whole month. Do you want to see what did it? This. Yes. Sometime in the last 24 hours, they changed the one-day ban to a full month, and it was for this academic interest joke regarding the intellectual stimulation of the stories coming in the morning news. Anyone out there think I was posting something with violent intent or would cause actual injury to someone? Euler? Zucky. Someone's gonna get you. Don't know when, but karma is salivating at you right now. Let's head over to remind ourselves what the global magnetic maps look like. It turns out that this plus the conductivity profiles of the ground are critical elements of whether a solar storm induced current will flow powerfully through an area, putting technology at enhanced risk. FYI, New Zealand and East Australia have some of the scarier geologic profiles in this realm. Up next, we're heading to space, and it begins with a surprise, yet again. This is almost too funny that every single look into space is breaking their models, but this one has an amazing edge to it. Numerous dwarf galaxies in different directions away from the Milky Way core all had simultaneous baby booms of stars. Not sure if you can put that one together in your head, but it hints at the galactic scale to extragalactic scale, if not universal scale excitement. The physics of having all of them activate at once is shattering to mountains of claimed certainty in astronomy, not to mention most of our concepts of space. But now let's do a bit of background here as we come back to the Earth. Folks, the work on geomagnetic jerks and glitches in Earth's rotation speed, the length of a day, are well explored. In fact, in just the last year, there have been a number of studies in major journals coming out and solidifying the principle and even attempting to guess at the mechanisms involved. This is either hitting exactly the rotation anomalies are occurring immediately before, and matching numerous cycles known in the subfield. But it's more than just the geomagnetic jerks, it's the geomagnetic storms from the sun, storm above as opposed to storm below. Of the dozens of studies on the solar trigger for Earth's rotation glitches, the one last year was one of the best and most definitive. And by the way, the actual mechanism was described in 1998, theorized before we had the true data to back up the hypothesis, and the coupling explains the total global integration of these magnetic events. And so we come to today's top story, having done the background, with the Russian government funding a study concluding that it's not only solar activity driving those rotation glitches, but the axis tilts as well. The claim is to fully change the geophysics game and recognize the sun as the driver of things blamed on internal dynamics and Milankovitch cycles. And when the greatest of all solar blasts in the harmonic cycle of 3,000, 6,000, and 12,000 years creates the greatest solar storm at the same time as electromagnetic coupling with the core is working on a geomagnetic jerk on steroids level, what happens to the Earth's rotation and axis tilt then? We greatly appreciate your support, and we have answers to your questions. See the disaster playlist below the video or on our channel homepage. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. 
right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.